Hey, how's it going? This is Jack Oberkirsch with HomeMusicMaker.com, and today we're going to be doing a comprehensive guide on the Reaper Spectrum Analyzer. All right, so let's jump right in. Um, the first thing that we're going to want to do in order to use this is open up whatever um, track we want to put it on. So in this case, I'm going to put it on the master bus. So let's hit the effects button right here. Open that up, press add, and then um, type in SPEC, and then you'll see the frequency spectrum analyzer meter. Um, Kakos, so that's the Reaper spectrum analyzer right there. So go ahead and double click that. And as you can see, um, what we're looking at here is the EQ spectrum of our full master track. Um, and obviously other visual EQ plugins such as, you know, this one right here or the Reaper stock EQ, re-EQ, um, both give you a visual representation of your EQ spectrum, your frequency spectrum, but the uh, a frequency spectrum analyzer kind of gives you a more in-depth and detailed look. So as you can see, if we make it full screen, we get a nice full screen view of our um, frequency spectrum. So let's go ahead and pr press play on the track and see what we can see. So yeah, like I said, on re-EQ, we still have a nice little view of the frequency spectrum and whatnot, but on the spectrum analyzer, it's much more in-depth and detailed, and we also have these controls that are going to help us get an extra, um, get some extra visualization of the EQ spectrum. So, let's go here. Stop this, and let's move it to right here. All right, so let's take a look at the different functions within the Reaper spectrum analyzer. Um, so the first one that we're going to look at is the phase toggle. So let's look at what the phase toggle does. As you can see, it actually gives us a, um, a visual representation of the phase in relation to our EQ spectrum. Um, I mean, this is this can be handy if you want to take a look um, at how the phase is on your EQ spectrum. I typically leave this one off though, um, but it's definitely an extra, it's a great point of extra visualization. So let's hit the play on the track. <laughs> And to turn that one on or off, you just hit, you just click it. Simple as that. Cool. So that's one function of the Spectrum Analyzer in Reaper. The next thing that we're going to look at is the integrate function right here. So let's see what this does. And the way that you toggle this one is click and drag. And it maxes out at um, 2,500 milliseconds. So as you can see, what this function does right here is it slows down the EQ curve as opposed to when you turn it down to zero where it was. Um, you're seeing the EQ curve in a very fast and uh, real-time spectrum, whereas when you turn this one up and you can adjust it anywhere from zero to 2,500 milliseconds. So this slows down. So that way you can take a closer look, um, kind of a slowed down look at what's going on with your EQ spectrum. So I'll show you what I mean when I, hit pl uh, when I press play right here. So yeah, this function is handy because um, if you want to take a look at it in real time, you know, you can turn it down to zero and that's great. But if you're looking to take more of a slowed down look, um, the integrate function is definitely the way to go. And um, again, that's one of the things that a Spectrum Analyzer offers that a standard visual EQ plugin does not. All right, cool. So the next thing we're going to check out is the slope function. Let's go ahead and pr hit play on the track. Let's fast forward though. And again, to use the slope function, you click and drag. And you'll notice what the slope function is doing is it's not changing the way the track sounds at all. That's not what a spectrum analyzer does. It's just for analyzing an EQ spectrum. Um, but as we toggle this, it changes the bias of whether um, more high end is shown or not. I typically leave this one zeroed out unless you really have a, a purpose for using the slope function. I would leave that one uh, zeroed out, but it's just a, a way to take a, a different look at your EQ curve based on the slope of that curve. Cool. Let's move right along. The next function I want to take a look at is the floor function. And this one is um, kind of the, one of the more handy ones of the Reaper Spectrum, Anal the Reaper Spectrum Analyzer. Let's hit play on the track. And you'll notice, if you click and drag on this, it gives 
But this one's handy if you want to take a, if you want to zoom in and take a close look at the, uh, at an EQ curve or a, a far away look, for example. Here's the, here's as pretty much zoomed out as you can get it. It goes to negative 450 decibels all the way to, I believe it was zero decibels. And that way, once you toggle all the way to the zero or the lowest number, you can take a really close look at what's peaking. Actually, it's negative 12 decibels is where it maxes out on the low end. Cool, yeah. So the floor function is particularly handy for um, taking a look at um, your EQ spectrum in a different uh, a different scale based on decibels and hertz. All right, so the next function that we're going to look at in the Reaper Spectrum Analyzer is... Let's also find a new place in the track. This right here, um, the standard setting for this one is Blackman Harris. If you click it again, it goes to Blackman and then rectangular and then hamming. Um, and this is just, if you, you'll notice as I toggle through them. It just slightly changes the, um, the bias of how the EQ spectrum is shown. I always just leave it on the default of Blackman Harris. I, um, I don't really see the benefit of changing it around very much. Um, but yeah, that's that. That's that um, function in, Re in the Reaper Spectrum Analyzer right there. And then there's one more that I want to show you today, and it is the FFT um, control. And this one is particularly handy. Let's take a look at what it does. So it's it's another one that you click and drag. So it goes down all the way to, to 16 is the lowest that it goes. And this one kind of controls the definition at which our EQ spectrum or our EQ curve for the track is shown. So you'll notice when I have it all the way down at 16, it just gives us a very a very broad and general um, view of our, our track's EQ spectrum, whereas like if we turn it all the way up to as high as it goes and it maxes out at 32,768, 32, um, you know, we get pretty a pretty detailed view of that spectrum. I like to leave it in the default, which I believe is, yep, 1,024 right there. Um, but this can be handy if you want to take a more uh, broad view of your track and, you know, move it down a little bit. 16 is a little bit low, and then also 32,000 is a little bit high. So again, I would leave this on the default, but it can be handy for taking a different look at your uh, track's EQ spectrum. I'll show you what I mean here. So you'll notice when I have it all the way up, that we're having a ton of detail here in the, uh, the high mids and the highs. Um, whereas we're going to turn it down, again, we're just getting very broad broad and general view of the track so yeah that's the fft function i personally like to leave it at 1024 um but yeah so those are the different functions within the reaper spectrum analyzer um i want to talk about what this what a, a spectrum analyzer is used for and how it's more beneficial than the spectrum analyzer on the you know a visual eq plugin and you know the main thing as you've seen from this tutorial is that uh, a spectrum analyzer offers more functions and more ways to view your EQ curve. And there's there's no way to, um, you know, add curves to this or alter your sound. That's not what a spectrum analyzer does. It's just for analyzing an EQ spectrum and uh, taking a look at it in different ways. If you're looking to actually alter a sound, that's what, in, obviously, that's what an equalizer or an EQ plugin is for. But yeah, so a frequency analyzer plugin is very handy if you're trying to take a close look at a track. For example, when we when I press play on this track here, the track that I'm working on, some of the things that I notice are I have a lot of buildup in the low end. Um, this artist was definitely looking for a lot of bass, but I might have to go through and cut a little bit of the lows, maybe from the 20 to 50 hertz range. And then I'm also noticing that I have quite a bit of air in my track. You can even, even while the track is paused, you can notice it bouncing around right here. So um, that's kind of what a spectrum analyzer is used for. You can use it to make educated decisions 
uh, while working on a track. Educated EQ decisions, that is. But yeah, so that's the uh, Reaper Spectrum Analyzer. Um, just to take a look at the full name of it in case you ever need to, in case you're looking it up. It's called the Frequency Spectrum Analyzer Meter by Kakos and uh, JS colon. So yeah, that's the Reaper Spectrum, Spectrum Analyzer. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate you tuning in. We got a, bu a bunch more awesome content coming your way, so don't miss out on that. Appreciate you guys. Hey,